and Senator McCaskill, your reaction to what we just saw in Nancy Pelosi's <laughs> office. Well, I'm going to use a technical term here, Lawrence. Nancy Pelosi is a badass. Uh, she, is, <laughs> she is. She is. In all of the clips you saw today, you saw her taking the kind of leadership role we would expect from the president of the United States. And I think most Americans that can look with a clear eye at the facts realize that she was doing everything in her power to make sure democracy went on. Uh, Michael Beschloss, uh, I, historians have never had material like this. There has never been a moment like this in our history, no. anything like it. No. Uh, we are so lucky that this behind the scenes video exists that we saw today. What did you learn about what happened that day from this behind the scenes video today? Well, you know, one thing, Lawrence, you and I have talked about the fact that in writing history books, you and I both have listened to a lot of these tapes that LBJ made of his private conversations, but those were audio tapes. And I just wish that Alexandra Pelosi were around LBJ or JFK during their crises or FDR at the time of Pearl Harbor, because, you know, you not only hear these voices, but you see the expressions. And all I can say is, Thank God that her mother, Nancy Pelosi, was Speaker of the House on the 6th of January. Look at that command presence. She's not getting rattled. She's saying, not only will I punch Donald Trump out if he dares to come up to the Capitol, but she's calling, trying to get the National Guard sent to protect the Congress and the Capitol, which is what the President of the United States should have been doing. The fact that Trump was not doing that shows that he wanted violence, he probably wanted to declare martial law. He may have hoped for assassinations and hostages that would have led him to restore or order with authoritarian powers. This was serious. And if Trump and if those rioters had been a little bit faster, we might be living in a country of unbelievable darkness and cruelty. Senator McCaskill, when you watch uh, Chuck Schumer uh, going to work there on the phone with Nancy Pelosi, they're each talking to governors, they're talking to cabinet members, uh, trying to get uh, all of everything done that Donald Trump is supposed to be doing. And we know that while they're doing this, Donald Trump is sitting there watching TV and enjoying what he is seeing in the Capitol. Uh, you yeah. know Chuck Schumer, you've been in those rooms with Chuck Schumer, but not under that kind of pressure. What did you see when you saw them working together like that? I saw the same Chuck Schumer that you see uh, day in and day out when he's trying to, to get something done, uh, no nonsense. Uh, and I should point out too, Lawrence, I think it's important to remember that there was some footage showing not just Pelosi and Schumer, but also Mitch McConnell and John Thune. Uh, in a huddle, trying to figure out what they could do to stop this madness. And then you saw them talking to Vice President Pence. He was trying to do. He refused to get in the car and leave the premises. So the, the key leaders on that day were performing the roles they should, some with more strength than others. The only person who was AWOL was the one who cooked this thing up in the first place. And that was Donald Trump. I don't think he will ever raise his hand and swear to tell the truth in front of the United States Congress. But because um, I, I don't think he's capable of telling the truth is probably why he'll never do it. But that point that, that you've made is so important. I just want to stress it, that that, that absolutely unanimous. No one there was saying, uh, not McConnell, not Thune, none of the Republicans were saying, not Kevin McCarthy, uh, why don't we just slow down and go home and come back uh, in a couple of days? No, no one was saying that. Talking to my friends that were there uh, during those harrowing few hours when everyone felt threatened and felt the world had turned on its head, uh, no one was more forceful about going back in and doing their job to certify the election than Mitch McConnell. Now, clearly, for political reasons, he's lost his backbone. He's turned into the same kind of coward that most of the other Republicans have on the subject of Donald Trump. But that day and that night, he was as determined as Nancy Pelosi to get back in the Senate chamber and certify the election for Joe Biden. And uh, we also had that testimony today about Kevin McCarthy's phone call 
uh, to Donald Trump while he was uh, off camera there uh, with, with them. Uh, I'm told he left the room when he was making those phone calls to Donald Trump. Uh, and, and him supposedly, uh, Donald Trump supposedly saying to Kevin McCarthy, well, it looks like those people at the Capitol care about this more than you do. Yeah, and by the way, that was absolutely, there was confirmation on that. Um, because not only do we have a congresswoman talking about that conversation, Mick Mulvaney, the former chief of staff to President Trump, who was serving as an ambassador at the time, he's confirmed that McCarthy told him about the same conversation where Trump said, your problem is you don't care about it as much as they do. You don't want me to stay in office like they do. Um, that's the way he was thinking that day. And he wasn't going to do anything to save lives to save the capital, to save the democracy that day. All he was doing was trying to grasp power that he no longer had.